Hi there, welcome to this week's uh, second sermon for Faith Christian Reformed Church. As we're looking ahead to Christmas, I want to read a scripture text today that also looks ahead to Christmas. This is Luke 1, 26 to 38, and uh, the heading in my Bible says, The Birth of Jesus Foretold. Let's hear God's holy and infallible word together. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. Some of you might know or even remember uh, this bit of history. That in July 1978, a very special little girl was born in England. Her name, Louise Brown. What made her so special? Well, she was the first test tube baby. Not very not a very pleasant term but but it means that that she was the first baby conceived outside of a human body and and since then any number of children have be, been conceived that way and more reproductive advances have happened since then for for example doctors and scientists have studied and been experimenting with something called parthenogenesis parthenogenesis it comes from that word comes from two Greek words that literally mean virgin birth so there's actually a science of virgin birth um, and it refers to a baby being conceived and born an embryo developing without fertilization without having a male and a female it, it happens naturally in any number of plants in some animals and it's also been artificially induced in a number of cases and then what has happened is that something genetically identical is produced is reproduced uh, basically a clone as fascinating as all this may be none of this is miraculous like the conception and birth of Jesus Christ Christ's birth remains the greatest miracle of conception that the world has ever known. Jesus was born a human baby and was a unique and separate individual, not a clone, but was conceived with no male seed, only a human female, his mother Mary. We talk a lot about Christ's birth at Christmas, of course, but, but I want us right now to think about the virgin birth specifically. We confess in the Apostles' Creed that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. It's not like we don't believe this as Christians, but I, I wonder, it, it feels to me like we don't really think about it too much. We don't really do a whole lot with that doctrine or, or, or or, or think much about what it means for us in our lives. In this second sermon on the second Sunday of Advent, I, I want us to reflect on just how important Christ's birth is, but in particular, 
how important his virgin birth is. There, there are a couple of pastors uh, that I read on this topic that gave me some uh, ideas and thoughts that contributed to this message. The virgin birth, then, is deeply meaningful for our life of faith in at least several ways. I want to talk about three of them. First of all, the virgin birth is vital for your view of Scripture. We talk about the Bible as our infallible rule for faith and practice. And I often say, like I even did a little bit earlier before the Scripture reading, this is God's holy and infallible word. And, and I do that because it's so important for us to remember exactly what this word is compared to every other word we hear around us. This word is from God. Any other word is from a mere human being. And, and this that's something we need to stand on and maintain today. And, and a doctrine like the virgin birth forces us to do that. Something this miraculous, something this out of the ordinary makes us ask the question, in light of those who deny the reliability of Scripture, do I believe God's Word? Do I trust in it? And, and then, of course, you either do or you don't, because, because you can't pick and choose parts of the Bible. It's either all reliable or none of it is. Either all the doctrines and the miracles are true or none of them can be depended on. And, and so we're affirming our belief in the Word of God and its authority when we affirm the doctrine of the virgin birth, this miracle of Jesus' birth. To live our lives with this view of Scripture these days, that it's authoritative, it's true, it's absolutely reliable, it's not always popular. It's going to ruffle some feathers, cause some waves, and even make some people angry and, and against us. I think in, in recent years of, of the forcefulness of the LGBTQ plus agenda and, and how it seems to call anyone who does not agree with them intolerant, people full of hate. But we don't base our views on majority opinion. We don't base, base our views as Christians on whether or not people like us or, or, or even what we feel might be best or right. But we base what we believe on the Bible. Last February, this past February, Dr. Jeff Wyma from Calvin Theological Center came to our, our church to speak on this subject of, of, of same gender marriage, same gender sex, intimacy. He's the co chair of a denominational committee that's bringing a report soon on human sexuality to our denomination's annual synodical gathering. Dr. Wyma spoke on that in a Saturday evening lecture. It's available on our YouTube site if you want to check it out. It's quite well done. Um, and, and he shared there that, with, that when you study the New Testament, which is what he focused on, there is a clear, he said, consistent and compelling argument against same gender marriage and activity. And he said there's just no other way to honestly and seriously read the Bible on this topic. At the same time, Dr. Wyma emphasized the love and care and sensitivity that we as a church need to show around this topic, and especially how yet always the Bible calls us to a love and a respect for the dignity of all people. But even when you are gracious and loving in what you say you believe these days, your view of Scripture might very well cause backlash in today's culture. You might very well be called intolerant. We see that today, and we, we want to be prepared for that, but let there be no mistake about it. There is no other direction for living and salvation, no other comfort 
and blessing for this life and the next than the good news of Jesus found in this infallible word of God, the scriptures. As a church, we must not compromise, but continue to stand on the Bible, to share its message, to proclaim it, to continue to be built up in it for our lives. We don't want to compromise in terms of the truth of God's word, and we also don't want to compromise in terms of the love and the service for others that the Bible calls us to. And so, the virgin birth is vital for our view of Scripture, but secondly, it's vital for our view of the world. It's vital for your view of the world. When we talk about worldview and, and our view of the world, uh, we can talk about a lot of different worldviews out there, a lot of different philosophies, a lot of different approaches to life, but they come down to two major different differences, basically. Um, we could have either a closed view of the world or an open view of the world. And here's what I'm getting at with those terms. You can look at the laws of nature, action, reaction, and believe that what we can observe is all there is. Nothing can come in or go outside of that. And that is what I mean by a closed view of the universe. The other option is to believe there is more, that God is above and beyond what we can see and touch and hear, and he can step into our world and universe as he pleases, that there is a spiritual realm or dimension, if you will, uh, that traditional scientific experimentation and observation can't account for. There are angels and demons. We have a soul. There's a heaven and a hell. That's an open view, and that's what the Bible teaches. A closed view of the world is literally a materialistic view. All there is is material. All there is is matter, and there's nothing more. The virgin birth shows us that there's more to life than that. God created the material world, the laws of nature, the orbiting of planets, gravity, and all the rest, with such a consistency that, that we can study what we observe through science and have scientific formulas for these things that, that are reliable. But then through the virgin birth of Jesus, he stepped into the world. And he did that because he cared about his children enough to send his son to change us, to bring salvation that, that we couldn't find or, or create on our own from within our world, within our universe. It had to come from outside, from him. So second, the virgin birth is vital for your view of the world. Third, uh, and finally, the virgin birth is vital for your view of Jesus. Uh, we, we talk much about the birth of Jesus at Christmas, of course, especially we focus on Jesus as a baby born for us, born like us. He had to eat and grow. He was and is fully human. He assumed human flesh, as we put it. The virgin birth reminds us that there's even more going on here. He is also fully God, and that's really crucial because he was born miraculously of a virgin by the Holy Spirit. I want to read something that uh, Pastor John MacArthur once said. If we could condense all the truths of Christmas into only three words, these would be the words, God with us. God with us. We, we tend, he says, to focus our attention at Christmas on the infancy of Christ. He says the greater truth of this holiday is his deity. More astonishing than the baby in the manger is the truth that this promised baby is the omnipotent creator of the heavens and the earth. And so Jesus is totally and fully God and totally and fully human, except not born in sin like the rest of us. In the end, it was for our benefit that he was born, 
and that he was born as he was fully human fully God of a virgin conceived by the Holy Spirit as our catechism says we're benefited in this way Jesus is our mediator and with his innocence and perfect holiness he removes from God's sight my sin mine since I was conceived and so Jesus coming and his birth that we celebrate this season is vital but the fact that he was born of a virgin is too and it's so important to our faith it's one of those handful of foundational truths that the church decided long ago to include in the Apostles Creed Jesus virgin birth was ultimately for you and for me for his people his spirit continues to be at work today opening people's hearts to him helping us live for him as Mary was receptive to God's will and the spirits work back then remember what she said in our reading I am the Lord's servant may it be to me as you have said as Mary was receptive to the Spirit's work back then the Lord is calling you and me to submit to the Holy Spirit in our life today does your life this season look like someone who is responsive to the Spirit's work day by day may that be the case let's pray Heavenly Father thank you for this opportunity to hear from your word and and to hear uh, a bit of what it means for our lives thank you for this great truth this great miracle thank you for your your word thank you for um, the view of the world that your word gives us and thank you especially for the view of Jesus our Savior that your word gives us and that we could talk about and reflect on a bit today Holy Spirit fill us with more of you day by day help us to follow you help us oh God to stand on, on your holy and infallible word always in our day in Jesus name Amen